They praised in unison your conquering hand, O Lord, for wisdom opened mouths that were mute and gave eloquence to the tongues of infants. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously, excuse me, O God, who have, been, who have united many nations in confessing your name, grant that those reborn in the font of baptism may be one in the faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the crippled man who had been cured clung to Peter and John, all the people hurried in amazement toward them in the portico called Solomon's portico. When Peter saw this, he addressed the people. You children of Israel, why are you amazed at this? And why do you look at us so intently as if we had made him walk by our own power, our piety. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, this man whom you see and know, his name has made strong. And the faith that comes through it has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. Now I know, brothers and sisters, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away, and that the Lord may grant you times of refreshment and send you the Christ already appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the times of universal restoration of which God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. For Moses said, a prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen in all that he may say to you. Everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be cut off from the people. Moreover, all the prophets who spoke from Samuel and those afterwards 
also announce these days. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your ancestors when he said to Abraham, in your offspring, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. For you first, God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning each of you from your evil ways. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord, O Lord, how glorious is your name over all the earth. What is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. All sheep and oxen, yes, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the seas. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The disciples of Jesus recounted what had taken place along the way and how they had come to recognize him in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see, I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are a witness of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For most of my life, a lot of art was wasted on me. My parents would, uh, when we would go on vacation, some of you would probably go to the beach or you'd go to the mountains and you'd ski. We would go and visit state capitals. Um, and so if we were driving through a state, even if we were driving through the very corner of a state, we would make a detour and we would go to the state capital. And so sometimes we would, as kids for vacation, we would be seeing two state capitals in one day. And um, they all looked the same to me. I was, I was bored out of my mind, quite frankly. Mom and Dad, if you're watching this, I'm, I'm sorry. I was bored out of my mind. You knew I was bored out of my mind. I still probably would be bored out of my mind today. But the fact is, is I guess as I've gotten older, um, even though I would never want to do that myself for vacation again, I think I got enough of it as a kid, I think I've come to appreciate more and more uh, as I've gotten older uh, the fact about how difficult something like a big building is to make. 
or even more so, uh, like you can, I could see pictures of things like the Sistine Chapel when I was a little kid, and I could think, I don't understand what the big deal is. I mean, we've got great artists out there, but you know, and it looks like, it's just like another picture to me. Like, what's the big deal? And then I got to Rome about six years ago, and I got to see the Sistine Chapel and realize how large it was, and all of a sudden I saw the big deal. Because when you think about how the Sistine Chapel had to have been painted, is that Michelangelo had to have this scaffolding, which he had to get up into the scaffolding, and it was really hard to get back down. It would have taken a really big effort. And so what you had to do is you had to have the picture in your mind as you went up there. And then as you're painting, you're supposed to be able to, as you're painting these small details, there's no opportunity to step back and see the whole painting for maybe hours at a time. And so what he would do is he would be up there and he would just be painting small details, small details, small details. Um, and then uh, he would, uh, when you would step back, then the whole picture would make sense. But from up close, it doesn't look like anything at all. Or take something even like the, the mosaics at the uh, St. Louis Basilica. Um, I mean, a lot of the time, those uh, mosaics were made by people who themselves were not artists. So, you know, you might have a, basically a worker that was getting up there and, you know, they were in the scaffolding and they would have these, you know, lines taped to the wall about, well, this section all needs to be gold right here. And so what they would do is that they would have people, and this would, of course, be the areas where there was just one color being used, but what they would do is they would have all these different workers and their job was just to put in all these little pieces of broken glass that, um, you know, were in the gold section and they didn't necessarily know what the whole completed project was going to look like. All they saw was the small details that they were working on that day. And the fact of the matter is that um, a lot of the scriptures are like that. Because what Jesus ends up doing in today's gospel is that he, um, it's the, the day of the resurrection, and he appears to his disciples, and he says, peace be with you. And then what he does is that scripture says, starting with Moses and the prophets, he broke open the scriptures for them. Because what Jesus ends up doing is it's like the revelation of a really big picture at that point where for the first time the disciples were able to see not the little part that they were working on, but they were able to see the whole picture. Because there are certain things that happen in the scriptures which quite frankly um, didn't make a lot of sense according to God's plan. So for instance, Abraham, uh, you know, he and his wife Sarah are barren. They're not able to have kids, and then God leads them out into the desert for a long time, decades, and says, if you remain faithful to me, then I'm going to give you a, a son, and from this son is going to uh, spring up a great nation. And so after years and years and years of God not fulfilling his promise, he finally gives him this son, Isaac. And when Isaac is about 10 years old, um, Abraham gets this vision, or the, he hears from God, I want you to go up on top of a high mountain, and I want you to sacrifice your son for me. Just offer him in sacrifice. And so Abraham, um, he's going up the mountain, and you know he's with his son Isaac, and Isaac says, um, Dad, I know we're going out to sacrifice, but I don't, we didn't bring any sort of animal with us. Where's the sacrifice? And Abraham, how do you answer that if you're a parent at that point? And Abraham answered as best as he could. He said, God, son, God is going to provide the sacrifice. I know he possibly, in his mind, he was thinking, he couldn't possibly take my son from me because God is faithful to his promise. And he's getting up there, and right as Abraham is getting ready to kill his son Isaac, God stays his hand and says, look, no, don't do it. And then what ends up happening um, afterwards is that Abraham is, and Isaac are probably left thinking, why did God have us do this in the first place? Why did God test me in this way? And quite frankly, not only them, but everybody throughout Jewish history must have been looking at that same incident and scratching their heads. Why would God choose to do things that way? Why did God have that happen at all? And what ends up happening is that when you're only able to see the small picture the small little part that Abraham and Isaac were working on, the picture made no sense. But then what ends up happening is that um, when you read the scriptures carefully, 
when Abraham says, God will provide the sacrifice, how prophetic that ended up being. Because when God asked Abraham to offer his only son, what God was doing was that he was in the large picture. Thousands of years later, he was saying, just as Abraham was willing to offer his son as a sin offering, that's not actually what I wanted of him. I wanted this to be a foreshadowing of the fact that I would be offering my own son as a sin offering. And just as from Abraham sprung a great nation by natural generation, so too through the sacrament of baptism, I'm going to have a large nation of adopted sons and daughters um, through baptism come to me and become my beloved sons and daughters. Or take something like um, Moses and, and the Israelites when they were in captivity for 300 years. I'm sure it was really great to be released from bondage after all that time, and yet I'm sure that the Israelites were sitting there and scratching their heads and thinking, you know, it's great that Moses came after 300 years of this, but why didn't God come a little bit sooner? You know, why was it that we, we waited so long? And then, you know, what could have happened is that, you know, they had this ceremony that really was, was really strange, the Passover ceremony, where, you know, they were supposed to sprinkle blood on the doorposts, like the blood of a lamb. And just thinking, well, that's, that's a little strange. Why, why would we do that? And if they did that, then the angel of death, which was um, taking the firstborn of all the Egyptians, that um, they, it, the, they would, the angel of death would pass over their household. And then how they were supposed to eat unleavened bread, because, because... Uh, why would you do that? I mean, everybody ate leavened bread. Unleavened bread kind of tastes a little gross. And then they were supposed to sacrifice a lamb that was supposed to be uh, pure and unblemished. And all these different things of the ceremony. And then all of a sudden what ends up happening is that Jesus, on the night of his death, when he breaks bread at the Passover, and he says, this is my body given up for you. And at that table, Jesus did not serve a lamb for the Passover dinner like everybody else had done. And the disciples are left scratching their heads just as the Israelites were years ago and realizing that everything about the Passover was a setup for what God was doing here in giving us the Eucharist. That the lamb that was given at the, uh, at the Passover was a symbol of the sacrifice that God was going to give us so many years later in Jesus Christ on the cross. That the blood that was sprinkled on the three sides of the doorpost was going to represent the three spots where Jesus' hands and feet were nailed to the cross. And what ends up happening is that Jesus breaks open the scriptures and he, for the first time, gives the disciples the large view of human history. And brothers and sisters, that is something I look so forward to in heaven one day. Not only looking back on our current circumstances, but looking back on world history itself, looking back on my life. Because right now, every single one of us are only able to see the small details of what we're working on. Very few of us have had the opportunity to stand back and see the larger picture of God's handiwork. Because I'm sure right now there are many people who say, I just don't understand why God's putting me through this right now, or I don't understand why we've got this worldwide pandemic going on, and we just don't see how any of this is a part of God's plan. And yet what will happen at the end of time, when we reach heaven, is that we are going to have some distance from God's handiwork. And we're going to see what God was doing with all of this, just as Michelangelo was able to step back in the Sistine Chapel and see his larger works. Because what will happen is, is that just as on the day of res resurrection, when Jesus broke open the scriptures for his disciples, so Jesus is going to break open world history for us and give us an explanation of how everything leads to him. And let us offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord. For the Catholic Church throughout the world, may God guide and encourage all believers in their faith and reliance on Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of all nations, may God grant them wisdom and strength 
in building peaceful communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are grieving the loss of a loved one during this Easter season, be it from natural causes or the COVID-19 disease, may God provide comfort through the hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in this faith community who are, in, who are sick in mind or in body, may God give them courage as they face the difficulties of treatment and recovery. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the faithful departed, may God grant them rest and eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Which we pray every day for those on the front line fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. We also pray this morning for those behind the scenes, hospital employees, housekeepers, postal service workers, supply chain over the, tr over the, um, over the road long truck drivers, and people who keep our, our economy going despite great risk to themselves. For all of those people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we offer you these, our prayers and petitions. We ask you to hear and answer them if they be in accord with your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, praise in the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously be pleased, O Lord, to accept the sacrificial gifts we offer joyfully, both for those who have been reborn and in hope of your increased help from heaven. Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it right, is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to allow you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with passable joy, your land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body. 
given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took his chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and sang, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, you may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace, unity, in accordance with your will, who will reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word.
prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in us, may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.